Hello friends, this is Apurva the Book Hunter and I'm back with another video and another book. I promised you that I would talk about a book about the real thugs of India. So this is Confessions of a Thug by Philip Meadows Taylor which is a very old uh, adventure, romanticized adventure novel that was written in 1870 I think. Yes. So it was very popular back then in United Kingdom and among the royalty even. So this is actually an Indian reprint. This book I have here. It cost me like only 300 rupees for 500 pages. The page color is pretty good. Rupa publication rocks. So the plot is quite interesting. You know, it's about Amir Ali, who's a great thug. I mean, he was like a leader of a big band of thug. He was well renowned. He had a big bounty on his head by the British government. So this is about his life. He used to be the son of a rich nobleman when he was very young. He was traveling with his mother, father and a retinue of servants and suddenly they were killed by thugs on the way and one of the childless thugs adopted him and he forgot all about his uh, parents. And the thug brought him up, uh, educated him in martial arts and Persian and other things and in eventually he initiated him in his ways. So Amir Ali went on to become a renowned thug, killed like over 700 people by his testimony and uh, eventually he was caught. So this is all about his adventures, his uh, life events and his right up to his final capture. It's quite romanticized like sometimes to the point of like absurdness. But the plot is quite intriguing and what's most interesting is that it tells you so much about the thuggies. So the thugs were not like your regular bandits or decoys who simply fell upon travelers on their way. That's not that. They were actually kind of a sect. They were kind of a superstitious, quasi-religious sect. They had Hindus, Muslims all mixed in, in them. And yet they were worshipping a goddess called Bhavani. And they believed themselves to be the hand of some divine intervention. They thought like Bhavani had sent them on earth to destroy human beings, certain human beings and they were just aiding in the intervention and uh, it was just convenient that they were killing people and taking their belongings and they followed like uh, elaborate superstitious rituals and believed in them um, they were in fact the problem is that the thuggies the way they operated they couldn't have operated without the help of local authorities and it appears that Patels, uh, village headmen, Kotwals, Nawabs, even Raja and Nawabs, they aided and abated these people because they paid him, paid these authorities handsomely in taxes, jewels and whatnot. They were even given villages and lands to settle down, have family, cultivate the lands and all that. Eventually the British cracked down on them. They were really, they were so terrifying that some for a period of time they had terrorized the whole nation but uh, thanks to sir william henry sleeman he cracked down on all the thugs and somehow he managed managed to capture like more than 3000 thugs and incarcerated most of them hung some and abolished and absolutely destabilized the whole system so basically this book tells you a lot about their structure of their organizations how they operated like the multiple they when they had like bands of medium size or large bands of uh, people disguised as travelers they would entice small bands of travelers um, just you know pretending that they're just a large band or kafila and they could protect these small bands and they were eventually enticed by them and you know during one of their uh, process in, during the process of like uh, some entertainment a song or something like that when they were distracted these uh, poor victims uh, they would like a coward they would strangle them with rumal from the from behind and then they would just uh, uh, steal all their belongings and bury them in shallow graves so there are a lot of uh, you know there, there's distribution of duties among the thugs some of them dig graves, some of them kill people, some of them entice them disguised as, uh, you know, respectable merchants or travelers like Sotahi, Tilahi, Lugahi, Hutot, 
and all that you know i cannot go into the details you should read the book overall i would say this book is not bad i mean it's good but the writing style is so old and some of the references or phrases in there i i had some difficulty to understand them and it was quite you know like <laughs> it's quite i wouldn't say boring but it took me some time to read that because it's kind of a old style narrative but i would say it's quite interesting enough that you will be encouraged encouraged to you know keep reading this one and eventually you will be awarded with a lot of knowledge about the thugs in fact the character of amiral is not actually a real one it's a quite romanticized one in it had elements of like uh, three or four prominent thug leaders who were captured by the british and turned witness and their experiences and life events were you know like punched together to create this charismatic and horrible protagonist there are absurd romanticized sequences in this book but sometimes they lighten your mood because it's quite grim i mean people are killed right and left and so indifferent oh god however friends i if you would ask me i would recommend this book for those who want a little knowledge of the thugs i don't know if uh, the book of mr sleeman is available in the market i couldn't find it this is a better one you must have also noticed that i'm also reading milkman in this time i have not completed it as soon as i complete it i'll be posting a review it is such a weird book i mean the narrative is so quirky i love it i already am loving it i'm not like 50 pages old but still loving it so if you want to see the review please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like and share this video i bring you these interesting books all the time so that's all for today signing out this is opulva the book hunter bye